Excuse me, one second. There we go. It might be an insecurity thing. I just like to feel a little, a little bit taller. <laughs> Will you all please join me in Dash? And repeat the number two with me. Namo Amida. Namo Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sensei. What a wonderful day for all of us to come to temple. So for our Dharma school kids, today is our A Taikyo service. Could all the Dharma school, everybody, can you please repeat that with me? So let's all say A Taikyo together. A Taikyo. A Taikyo. Yes, that's wonderful. Today is A Taikyo Muen service. So A Taikyo. What does this mean? Well, before we get into what a taiko means, let's go back into asking us, asking ourselves, what is the purpose, or why, why, why do we do a taiko service? Well, the short answer is to commemorate and honor the many past members who have helped create the temple we love and that we visit today. We take this opportunity to remember all of those who are long past from the very beginning who have put so much of their time and effort into creating such a wonderful place and a wonderful gathering and a wonderful community for all of us to he come here, listen, and to enjoy the Dharma. Um, I'm not sure how many of you, for, for those of you who are probably longtime members, you probably have passed these pictures on the wall several times before. And, uh, but for those of you who are newcomers, but for those of you who have not looked at them in a while, I would highly encourage you to go out into the hallway and look at the history that is marked on our walls. Thank goodness we had photographers back in the 1920s and even before that to commemorate all of the wonderful people and community members who have put so much into uh, building our Sangha today. So um, I definitely uh, think that if you all look at the pictures, even if they are in black and white, there will still be a wonderful appreciation to members past, as there should be. But what does a taikyo mean? A taikyo, literally translated, means perpetual or continuously chanting the sutras, continuously chanting the sutras. Now, for some of you, um, you probably are very much used to this. For those of you who come to everyday Sunday services, you probably have by now memorized the chant of Juseige. Show of hands, how many of you can recite Juseige without a book? I'm, cert no, I'm certain more of you can. <laughs> You're just being modest. But I'm certain that many of you have been able to, I definitely know that when we do the uh, Nembutsu and Echo part, you don't need the book for sure. Ganmi, Shiku, Doku, right? You all don't need the book for that part. So we're continuously chanting the sutras. Well, wait a minute. There might seem to be somewhat of a disconnect. If we are honoring our past members and our, uh, the community from our history who have helped build the temple to what it is today, even if there are no more descendants from that person, how does continuously chanting the sutras relate to that, right? Like, why, why, would, why does chanting the sutras, why are we, you know, why does us chanting Amida Kyo, which is what we did today, does that affect them in the afterlife? Does that give them a better rebirth? Well, in our teachings, no. But what we are doing, uh, you know, uh, for what we are doing, chanting sutras is a sign of thankfulness. It is an expression of gratitude, not only to the past members, but to also Shakyamuni Buddha for providing us with the teaching that our members past and present can take refuge in now. It is interesting and I sometimes think amazing to think that what we are chanting today is what our ancestors and our past members chanted all those many years ago. And in many ways connects us to them in this present day. 
And when you think about it, we'll continue on into the future as well. For when our younger Dharma school students uh, continue to grow and continue to come to temple, or if they have to move, they go to another temple, we will still be connected in the way that we chant, Amirakyo, Juseige, Sambutsuge. This all comes back to connecting with our past loved ones and the insurance that our teachings will continue to spread in the future. And I find it actually very interesting that we are coming up on Thanksgiving as well. We all know that in the month of November, we are very much looking forward to the Thanksgiving holiday. We still have, I believe, two more weeks, right? Two more weeks before the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and I'm certain many of you are already have plans made and have wonderful feasts in mind and probably have a meal, meal, prepare, meal preparing in your head right now. Or maybe some of you are probably thinking about, ooh, the Black Friday deals. In fact, actually, I think now Black Friday <laughs> comes before Black Friday because I am starting to get lots of advertisements in my email about the early Black Friday deals that are <laughs> currently happening online. And so it's easy to get caught up in, you know, what to buy, all the food we're going to eat. But I think we have to stop back, stop and take a step back and, one, and remember again, the wonderful efforts that everybody, have, that everybody has done to help bring us this meal, to help bring us this time, to help bring us where we are today and really embody what the meaning of Thanksgiving actually is. And so chanting doesn't, you know, just have to be in the temple. And as I said before, many of us, you know, we uh, come to temple and this is the only time we chant. And I'm not definitely here to say, oh, you should chant more or you should, uh, you know, um, chant this many times a day. But when you have a very strong feeling of gratitude or thankfulness, I believe that many of you, some of you have an obutsudan in your home. You can chant in front of your obutsudan as well. Many of the Dharma school students have makeshift or uh, gohonzon or small obutsudans. You can chant in front of that too. I would like us to start really thinking that chanting, like sutras like jusei, and it can just be jusei ge or sambutsu ge. It doesn't have to be a long sutra like amida kyo or shoshin ge. You can just chant in front of your obutsudan to really show your gratitude. Because even though our past ancestors are no longer physically here to be with us, we must remember that because of our past ancestors, this building exists today. We should not stop being thankful to people just because they are gone. We should not stop being thankful to our present people, uh, to our present family members, to our community members. You know, we must not stop being thankful to them either. If anything, this reminds us, this Eitaikyo service reminds us that we are a, uh, Jodo Shinchu is a religion, is a uh, tradition of thankfulness and gratitude and acknowledging that thankfulness and gratitude. I find it very interesting that in November, there are so many um, holidays where we express our thankful heartfeltness to many people. So Thanksgiving is there and there's also Veterans Day. We must also remember to thank and acknowledge our veterans here in our Sangha and in our community for their heartfelt service to our country. So chanting doesn't just have to be at the temple. We can chant in our homes. We can chant in the car. We may not personally know all of the past members who have given so much to this temple, but it is still important to acknowledge them all the same not necessarily for their sake. For our tradition, all of our past members who have passed away or have gone from this life were born in the Pure Land. But it is for us to understand the importance of this temple and not just the temple, but the teachings that we teach here in our temple as well. All of our past members who we honor here today at a Taikyo service realized the importance of Shin Nan Shonin's teachings realize the importance of the Buddha Dharma, realize that there must be a space where we can all gather and listen to Shakyamuni Buddha's teaching of Bodhisattva Dharmakara's land of bliss. So with that being said, 
I sincerely hope that we really sincerely this month express our gratitude and thankfulness to all of our community members around us and to our family members and especially to our past loved ones. Thank you very much and please join me in Gashou. And repeat the number two with me. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Nam Mandats, Nam Mandats, Nam Mandats. Will you all please join me in Gashou? The Buddha then said to Shariputra, the elder, beyond a hundred thousand kotis of Buddha lands westwards from here, there is a land called perfect bliss. In that land, there is a Buddha called Amida who is expounding the Dharma at this moment. Shariputra, why is that land called perfect bliss? It is because the people of that land experience no suffering. Rather, they only know every kind of pleasure. That is why it is called perfect bliss. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Nam Mandats. Nam Mandats. Nam Mandats. Well, good morning again, everyone. So, as we all know, today's service is called a Taikyo, which means the perpetual chanting of the sutras. We just finished the second part of the Amida Sutra, and forgive me, I, it's been a while since I've chanted it, but I forgot how hard it is to hit the setaku and turn the pages at the same time. It can be quite difficult. Now, usually when I chant the Amida Sutra, um, I, I, uh, I should have brought it for show and tell, but I have an accordion type scroll book that I use and I can actually turn the page with my pinky. And so as I'm clicking the setaku together, I can turn the page with my pinky. Very easy, very easy to do. But I decided to use the Shin Buddhist Service, the Shin Buddhist Service book, and I, it's very difficult to turn the page and try to hit the setaku. And um, uh, actually, we should all, you, you should all try it sometime. Actually, I think it'd be a, a very fun experiment. I think. Um, uh, if you are interested in trying it, please ask me and I will uh, um, show you where you can order your setaku. It's, it's a lot of fun. Your neighbors might complain a little bit, like, what's all that clicking going on? But I think it'll be a fun, a fun thing to do. Now, speaking of sutras, um, this past Wednesday, myself and a bunch of our other students, uh, the Joro Shinshu 101 class, um, attended uh, Seattle Betsuin's uh, uh, fall seminar class, which happened to be on the same night. Uh, the, um, and Rosalie May, who is the uh, minister's assistant, uh, who has actually now been officially assigned to the Yakima Buddhist Church as a part of their pilot program. So um, Reverend Rosalie May, who is usually at Seattle Betsumi now does a remote service uh, and zooms into the uh, Yakima Buddhist Church. And um, she gave a wonderful and I think very relevant presentation on the three Pure Land Sutras. But first of all, here's a question. What makes a sutra a sutra? We, you know, we say we're going to do sutra chanting now and we say Juse Ge, Sambutsu Ge, and occasionally we'll do Amida Kyo for the special services. But what makes a sutra a sutra? And I think this is very important that we distinguish this sometimes between like the songs that we do or um, you know, some of the other things that we may recite, like the three treasures or uh, golden chain. Well, to put it, the simple answer of what makes a sutra a sutra is that it is a a text or a teaching that the Buddha himself spoke. So this is what makes a sutra a sutra. Shakyamuni Buddha himself would have had to have said it or would have said to have spoken it. So that is the simple answer to what a sutra is. Now scholars and other Buddhist schools and other um, you know, more complicated uh, teachings will go into, it has to fit this category and there has to be this in there and there has to be this part. But to make a long story short and to put it very simply, 
The sutra is the words of the Buddha. The sutra contains the words of the Buddha. And why do we celebrate a Taikyo by chanting sutras? Again, this shows a sign of appreciation to our teachings, connects us to those in, a, in the past, especially the past members who also took refuge in this. But it provides us with a sense of stability and continuation. This is what the Buddha intended. So, remember the story of the Buddha. The Buddha became enlightened and then taught, under, um, taught the first turning of the Dharma wheel where he taught his disciples. Some of you noticed that we have, the, we have wonderful pictures here in our hondo. If you look to your, uh, well, to your right, I guess, the second to the last picture on your right is the Buddha teaching his disciples, okay? And then after the Buddha passed away in the last picture, all of his disciples, many, 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 many years later, came together and they said, this is what the Buddha taught. Now, the legend has it, Ananda, Buddha's disciple and cousin, was the last person to become enlightened because he had to live long enough to recite from memory. So we have to remember this, too. Shakyamuni Buddha never wrote down any of his teachings. Okay? He, never, he never had a person, you know, uh, like uh, you know how we have our board meetings, right? We have the secretary you know, taking notes. Right? Never had that. The, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha s s sat there and usually a question was asked and, said, and someone said to him, hey, Bud hey Buddha, why this? Or Buddha, this is something I've been wondering about. And the Buddha would give a very long and a very descriptive answer. But never did the Buddha recite, or never did the Buddha tell Ananda, hey, take notes, take, write this down so you don't forget it. But as it so happened, the legend says that Ananda was so gifted with the art of memory that at the first council where they decided what was the Buddha's teaching, Ananda was able to recite all of the Buddha's lessons from memory. So if you, uh, you know, you don't have to look into your book, but if you go to your book, to the Shin Buddhist, Serv Shin Buddhist Service book, and you open to the first page of Amirakyo, you'll notice that the first line is Nyoze Gamon, right? Nyoze Gamon. And the, the translation of that is, thus have I heard. And that is supposedly Ananda recounting the story or the lesson of the Buddha that day. So this is a very special chant that we do, Amida Kyo, because Shakyamuni Buddha is sitting in front of his disciples. And what's interesting about this sutra is that usually with sutras, the Buddha is asked a question. Okay, something, someone notices something or someone has a puzzling question on their mind and they ask the Buddha a question. Buddha, why this? But in this sutra, uh, this, the important message of the Amida Sutra was so important and vital to our teaching that the Buddha spontaneously spoke. Okay, so this is one of the rare sutras where the Buddha was not prompted by being asked a question. Okay? And in fact, actually, the interesting thing was, was that the Buddha directed his statements to Shariputra, one of Buddha's other disciples. You notice that when, when we were chanting Amida Kyo, it was always Shari, Hotsu Shari, Hotsu Shari, Hotsu Shari, Hotsu. That's because the Buddha is talking directly to Shariputra. Now, the interesting theory about this is the reason why he was directing his attention to Shariputra was because Shariputra was one of the first disciples to pass away. And in fact, Shariputra passed away before the Buddha, okay? So this is very important to remember. Shariputra passed away before the Buddha. And so what the Buddha was doing when he looked at Shariputra was he was, one of the theories is, is he was addressing Shariputra when he knew that Shariputra's end was coming. But again, this message is not a message of darkness and loneliness and, and, um, you, know, and uh, you know, depression, right? This is actually a beautiful sutra that has beautiful descriptions of the Pure Land that tells people that after we pass away, we are immediately born into the Pure Land. And not only that, 
We don't have to be monks to be born into the Pure Land. We don't have to be these saintly people who, you know, always do good things 100% of the time. We are flawed human beings. This, the Amida Sutra once again reminds us that to be born in the Pure Land, we just need to say Namo Amida Butsu. We just need to take refuge in the teaching of Amida Buddha into the infinite light and life of wisdom and compassion. This teaching is for us. And this relates back to our previous members who passed away, who are long gone now, but legacies still live on. For those of you who are interested, if you look behind you, you notice that there is a long list of people in, the, uh, in our temple who have donated heavily and donated a lot of their time and uh, energy to the temples. You notice it says perpetual memorial. That is a taikyo. That is the a taikyo. We used to have this long list of people we would acknowledge. Of course, the list is too long to say in one sermon or in, in one service, most likely. But it must be remembered and recounted that these past members also took refuge in this teaching. These past members took refuge in Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion. These past members also took refuge in the teachings of Shindan Shonin. And what wonderful teachings they are. Because, once again, they state that we do not have to shave our heads, put on monk's robes, and, and live lives of utter purity. Okay? We sometimes get upset. We sometimes get angry. We sometimes make mistakes. And that's okay, because Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion, the compassion of the Dharma, still continues to embrace us to this day, and, and will continue to embrace us into the future as well. So this is why I believe it is so important for all of us to continue chanting the sutras with a great sense of gratitude, because not only is it the teaching itself that we praise and that we and that we uh, take refuge in. But it is also the acknowledgement that our past members have sacrificed and given so much of themselves to this wonderful building and this wonderful community to ensure that it continues on. I see, uh, you know, it's so wonderful to see the first part of this service because I see so many different generations sitting together here. And to me, that, that shows us that not only do the teachings speak to us, but that we also want it to continue on into future generations as well. I see faces who have been here for a long time. I see wonderful new faces come into the temple. And this is all wonderful because it is the lesson that Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion is for all sentient beings, not just Japanese, not just people who understand Japanese or who you know, think in a Japanese way, but for all sentient beings. All people, all are welcome here. And this is what I believe our founders, have, our founders of the temple have intended, was for this temple to prosper and to grow and to continue preaching the Buddha Dharma. So with this in mind, I sincerely hope that when we continue to chant our sutras, we do so with a deep sense of gratitude of the, of the historical Shakyamuni Buddha, of the infinite wisdom and compassion of Amida Buddha, and our past members who have ensured that this temple will continue on into the future. Thank you all very much for attending today's service. Would you all please join me in Gasho? The Buddha then said to Shariputra the Elder, beyond a hundred thousand kotis of Buddha lands westwards from here, there is a land called perfect bliss. In that land, there is a Buddha called Amida, who is expounding the Dharma at this moment. Shariputra, why is that land called perfect bliss? It is because the people of that land experience no suffering. Rather, they only know every kind of pleasure. That is why it is called perfect bliss. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidavatsu.